Hi there, Andrew here. We're putting feelers out for the idea of sponsors for the show. We have grown to a sizable audience of legal professionals, and we'd love to find a way to get the resources to continue to grow the show and spend more time on it. This might take the form of more longer form, maximum minimum competence episodes, or longer daily episodes, or maybe short interviews. We've had a couple of inquiries regarding sponsorship, but want to get feedback from all of you, the listeners. If you have thoughts or have a sponsor in mind that you think would be a good fit, shoot me an email at andrew at leahy.org. We're still very much in the brainstorming stage, so all ideas are good ideas. So ends the housekeeping segment. Let's get to the show. Hello and welcome to the weekend edition of Minimum Competence. We're calling a maximum minimum competence episode. Essentially, time permitting and given a major legal news story, we'll try to get you a bit more up to speed than we can in our short form daily news show. This week, owing to this week's decision in favor of four book publishers and against the Internet Archive, we're covering that case, Hatchet v. Internet Archive, in brief. On your mark, get set, let's go. First, a bit of background. The Internet Archive is a nonprofit digital library that aims to provide free access to digital content for everyone. It was founded in 1996 by Brewster Kale and is based in San Francisco, California. The organization's mission is to preserve digital content and make it available for future generations. It has a vast collection of websites, books, videos, images, software, and other digital content that can be accessed for free. The Internet Archive has been involved in various projects, including the Wayback Machine, which allows users to see historical versions of websites, and the Open Library, which provides free access to over 2.5 million digitized books. The organization also hosts the annual Decentralized Web Summit, which explores the future of the web and its potential to become more decentralized and user-controlled. The Internet Archive is funded through donations and grants and is a 501c3 charitable organization. This week, the Internet Archive lost a lawsuit brought against it by four book publishers who claimed that the website did not have the right to scan books and lend them out like a library. The Internet Archive had launched its National Emergency Library Program during the COVID-19 pandemic, allowing people to read from 1.4 million digitized books with no wait list. However, Judge John G. Coltel decided that the Internet Archive had done nothing more than create derivative works and would have needed authorization from the book's copyright holders before lending them out. The judge dismissed all of the Internet Archive's fair use arguments and wrote that any alleged benefits from the Internet Archive's library, quote, cannot outweigh the market harm to the publishers. The Internet Archive says it will appeal. By way of background, fair use is a legal doctrine in the United States that allows limited use of copyrighted materials without seeking permission from the copyright owner. The doctrine recognizes that certain uses of copyright material are necessary for freedom of expression, education, research, and other public interests. Fair use provides a legal defense for using copyrighted works for criticism, commentary, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, research, and other transformative purposes. Four factors are used to determine whether a particular use of a copyrighted work qualifies as fair use. The purpose and character of the use, the nature of the copyrighted work, the amount and substantiality of the portion used, and the effect of the use on the potential market for the copyrighted work. Fair use is not a bright line rule, and courts must evaluate each case on its own merits. In general, a use is more likely to be considered fair if it is a non-commercial, transformative, and uses only a small amount of the copyrighted work. Obviously, the wholesale reproduction of a copyrighted book, for instance, uses a large portion of the copyrighted work and is not transformative of the underlying work. That is, we aren't talking about pride and prejudice and zombies. A compelling argument can be made that the market harm to the publishers, even in a time like the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, was significant owing to the existence of things like ebooks the shipment of books from online retailers. The Internet Archive also tried to argue that the lending system may have contributed to book sales, the theory being that individuals that borrow a book might like to have a permanent copy. The judge in the case dismissed those theoretical arguments in favor of the publishers, let's face it, theoretical arguments that their sales would have been higher had the Internet Archive not been lending out copies of their books. As ever, it is mostly a test of whose speculative story sounds more plausible. The Internet Archive is an important resource for preserving digital information and making it accessible to the public. It provides free access to a vast collection of digitized books, audio recordings, movies, and other materials that are in danger of being lost or forgotten. The website's Wayback Machine allows users to browse over 570 billion web pages saved over time. The Internet Archive also hosts a growing collection of software and video games, as well as a TV news archive, which provides access to a searchable archive of over 1 million news broadcasts. In sum, the Internet Archive plays a vital role in preserving cultural heritage and providing universal access to knowledge. As of now, none of that work in particular is at risk but care must be taken on the part of the Internet Archive, and this is not legal advice but merely an observation, that their important collection is not put at risk by leaning on concepts as nebulous as fair use in future endeavors. In other words, please, Internet Archive, if you're listening, don't get yourself shut down. To our other listeners, enjoy your maximum, minimum competence on the Internet Archive case. 